right, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining this second entry in the 2020 NASSP Virtual Advocacy Conference Series. The topic for today's discussion is how principals can invite lawmakers and other influencers to their schools for shadowing visits and why that can be an incredibly valuable effort to provide both a unique and formative experience to your students as well as showing the people who are making education policy and funding decisions what modern schools are facing today. This topic is especially critical now as school leaders continue to deal with COVID-19 and examine how students and staff will return to the building in the fall. As that happens, it's critical that lawmakers are aware of the situation on the ground in schools and the scope of the challenges that all of you are facing every single day. The more we have the opportunity to show them firsthand um, the needs of our students and schools, the better chance we have to compel them to provide the necessary resources to safely operate a school during the ongoing pandemic. So before we turn this over to today's presenters, um, let me say a few words about our virtual advocacy conference events this year. Uh, just a second here while I try and get my slide to move. There we go. Um, originally scheduled to take, to take place in March, the 2020 conference had to be canceled just as the COVID-19 outbreak began sweeping across the country. But the Advocacy Conference is an annual event in Washington, D.C., where hundreds of principals and educators from every state attend a day of presentation and discussion about the important role that school leaders can play in influencing lawmakers' decisions on education policy and funding, and also training sessions to advocate and organize effectively. And that's followed by a day of meetings on Capitol Hill with representatives, senators, and their staff. So we were disappointed that we were unable to see many of you in person this year, but we're pleased to be presenting some of the content that you would have seen at the conference in this virtual series. So as you'll hear in today's presentation, even though in-person advocacy with lawmakers may be more challenging during COVID-19, Policy decisions affecting schools are still being made, and it's critical that we continue to seek out ways that we can safely talk to elected officials, both remotely and in person during this time. Today's event is part two of a three-part series, and we hope you can join us on July 1st for the final virtual event as well. So you can RSVP for part three, and also access a recording of part one, which took place last week at the link you see on screen here. That's nassp.org 2020 virtual advocacy. A couple of quick housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, today's event is meant to be interactive. So we hope that all of you who are on Zoom will engage in the conversation by using the chat and Q&A features that you see pictured on screen here. If you have a question or comment at any point during the presentation, please type it in there. Um, I'll be keeping an eye on questions throughout the presentation and our presenters will take time at the end uh, for discussion. We also encourage you to continue today's conversation on social media. We're using the hashtag principles advocate on Twitter and we're also live streaming this event on Facebook. So if you're watching us on Facebook right now, please feel free to engage in the comments section there. Now I'm pleased to introduce today's presenters for this important conversation on conducting shadowing visits with lawmakers. Uh, both of our presenters today are NASSP state coordinators. In that role, they help lead and coordinate grassroots advocacy on behalf of NASSP in their states. So beyond just shadowing visits, if you're interested in getting involved with other efforts to influence lawmakers and advocate for education, they are great people to connect with. Joining us from Anki, Iowa, is the principal of Prairie Ridge Middle School, Jim Wickman. And our second presenter today hails from Grand Haven, Michigan. Uh, Tracy Wilson is the principal of Grand Haven High School. Uh, welcome to both of our presenters. And now I will turn it over to Tracy to get us started. Thanks, Greg. Welcome, everybody. We are um, sorry we weren't able to be face to face in Washington, DC back in March but are very excited and thankful for the opportunity that MESSP um, has done in order to change and shift to online uh, platform. I think we've all gotten a little bit used to that and it's been um, a great opportunity for us to stay connected. It's really, really critical that we do things with lawmakers and invite lawmakers in as well as visiting them 
um, when we're in Washington, D.C. for lots of reasons, but, it, but it's really critical to help them understand um, what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in schools and to build relationships with the lawmaker themselves and their staffers. Sometimes um, the lawmaker might not be available, and so it might be a staffer that you're connecting with, and that's a great person uh, to get your foot in the door with. It's great for them to have an opportunity to come into your buildings in order to get a, a firsthand bird's eye view of what's happening so that as they are making decisions and, and being the voting voice for public schools, um, they actually get a chance to see and hear from not only you, but your students and your teachers um, when they're in your building. They, um, have so many, many things on their plate. And if they are not real um, understanding of what's happening in a school system, they might not be able to make a decision at the table uh, that's always in our best interest. So I think it's critical that we learn how to be the voice and advocate for what's necessary. Um, and I will tell you that based on my experience um, with NASSP and the ability to attend the advocacy conference, um, we're also starting to do some things with our students and giving our students a little bit bigger voice and opportunity to talk with our lawmakers and be a little more active. And I think that's really important as well. Um, but they understand and feel that um, need, especially when somebody's walking around your building. Let's see what the next slide has. So, you know, it's, it's important to understand whether or not the time that you're investing in making these um, opportunities available is worth your time and whether or not the representatives and um, other constituents in your area feel like it's something that's meaningful to them. And this survey that was sent out, it's very, very um, evident based on the top three responses of scheduling meetings um, with VIPs and constituents and site visits, how critical it actually is. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an idea of what happens in my building and what I do uh, to bring in some people to learn about what takes place. But I think um, I just wanna start by saying it's a little bit intimidating if you've never tried it before. And so I think sometimes as a building leader, we might see some of the great things that other people in our profession are doing. And we might think that it's, it's a really great opportunity, but what if and how to. And so that's the beauty of this session today is you're going to get to hear from two building administrators that probably felt the same way that you might be feeling at the beginning of just a little bit of nervousness and, and how it's going to go. And, um, and I always often will say the worst thing that any lawmaker or constituent can say to you is no, I'm not available, or they just can't seem to find time in the calendar where it would work when your building is full of kids. Um, but until you take that first step, it does feel a little intimidating. So I wanna give a huge shout out and a thank you to NASSP for the leadership and push. But I also here in Michigan want to give a shout out to the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals because until I sat on that board um, and they actually brought us to the Capitol building as building principals, um, I, was, I was intimidated and nervous about doing it also. So I just want everybody to know that um, it's a great first step to take. So I, I don't always call it in my building a shadow visit. Um, our teachers and our students are used to us being in and around the building often and walking in and out of classes often. And it might be myself, it might be another building administrator, it might be a school board member, our central office staff, but it's commonplace in our building to have those of us that are really interested in what's happening in classrooms walking in and out of classrooms. So teachers don't stop instruction, kids don't stop listening to see why you're there. They just carry on as business as normal. So I oftentimes will call them learning walks. And I think a learning walk maybe um, 
is critical because I want, I want the people that are with me to learn something different. And when they walk out the door, I want them to have a better understanding when then they, than before they walked in. So, um, if we're talking specifically about lawmakers, they are oftentimes sitting with other lawmakers talking about school policy. And until they've actually walked in a school building to see how some of those policies affect us on a day-to-day -day basis, they might make a decision um, without really realizing the impact it's going to have in our world. And so um, I think it's really important to continue to invite them to our buildings. I know that right now it's a little more difficult with COVID um, and not having the ability to bring them in like this spring, for example, when our building was full of students. But I do think that especially now with a lot of the funding decisions that are being made, there needs to be a better understanding of how that funding decision impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I bring in lawmakers um, or parents, I, I do regular, um, monthly opportunities with my parents that have students that attend my building. Um, and I call it a parent learning walk, but I, I kind of set up the platform the same, really no matter who the person is that I'm meeting with. I want to have them understand some of the requirements and mandates that we have as building leaders. And here in Michigan, we are required to have a school improvement plan and goals that we submit to the state each year. And we take that full document and we create it into what we call a one page dashboard. So it's a little um, condensed version, if you will, of what that full improvement plan looks like. But it's kind of our day to day operating document to tell us whether or not the individual strategies we're working on are supporting our overall building goals and our building goals feed directly into our district goals. So in a building my size, which is about 1950-ish students, um, I have 110 professional staff. So each of those departments also create department goals that feed into my building goal that feeds into our district goals. Um, that's what kind of keeps us going. And I just, I think it's important, especially for lawmakers and parents to understand that we don't just show up every day and hope we get through what needs to happen on a day-to-day -day basis, that we do create a plan in regards to um, accountability and test measures. We, we create a plan that has a goal around climate and culture within our building. Um, I think it's important for lawmakers and parents to know what the demographic and the data looks like for our building. We are a comprehensive high school who serves students that are in self-contained classrooms, which um, will include, include uh, wheelchairs, feeding tube students, all the way up to AP students and early college students. And I don't think that um, a lot of people understand what a comprehensive high school looks like today. So I so I do share the demographics um, in regards to our free and reduced lunch numbers, our success data when it comes to college credits that students are receiving in high school, graduation rates, all kinds of data, um, just so they can see where, how we're doing and where we're at. Uh, I encourage and show them where on our website they can see our daily announcements, how they get the daily or excuse me, the weekly emails that go out. I make sure they understand what all the social media forums are that we use to communicate all the good things happening. Uh, we have a Bucks Care food pantry that serves any student who needs food, um, not necessarily because they qualify for food. This food pantry was created by parents in my building and they wanna make sure any student who's willing to ask uh, is provided with food when there's a need. Uh, we talk about the self-contained programs, the athletic music, all the different clubs we offer. Um, and then I give them an opportunity to ask questions. I find out if there was anything they really wanted to know um, when they came into that building today. And then um, we lock that office conference room door and we head out into the building. I think it's, it's really eye-opening um, especially for uh, the lawmakers that I've walked through my building, it's very eye-opening for them to see me stop and pick up paper on the floor. Or one time, one of the staffers that came to visit 
was surprised when we had a student in the hallway who actually threw up in the hallway and I went and got a garbage can and some things to wipe that up with. I think there are people that sit in places that, that think that we have people to do everything for us. And as a building leader, um, there isn't a whole lot that we don't do on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I just think it's really good for them to see the building active for them to see a cafeteria with 600 students in it, to walk in a classroom and listen to a quiet lecture or to walk into a, a science lab and see kids hands-on. Um, it's really, really eye-opening and it's really fun, um, but it's also casual in regards to they have an opportunity to walk over to a student desk if there's a lab going on and ask a student what they're doing and, and what the objective of the activity is. They ask me questions as we're walking, um, you know, what's happening and why this or why that. Uh, so it's not threatening and it's casual, but it's also extremely eye-opening. Next Tracy, slide. Could, could you tell us who this uh, official is that we're seeing on screen here? Yeah, this is Representative Bill Heisinga. And Bill's from our area. Um, he lives, when he's home in Michigan, about 20 minutes south of me. Um, and he has a staffer who's from um, a high school that's only 20 minutes east of me. So actually, when I was in Washington, D.C. last year for the advocacy conference, Bill was in Michigan when I was in Washington, D.C., but his staffer, um, whose father is the superintendent of this school uh, east of me, is who I got to meet with. And so that was kind of fun because he knew exactly everything I was talking about from our West Michigan area. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. So next, I'd like to welcome Jim to the mic. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Tracy. A couple of things I want to point out is, um, I really admire that you are, I, I could just never do the vomit thing. I try <laughs> to do everything else in the, I, I will do anything else. I've dug through, I found the retainers and garbage bags after lunch, I've done all that. It just, it just couldn't get to that step. So hat off to you on that. <laughs> um, Another, what I want to point out from what I learned from having this opportunity to work with Tracy is, is um, the way she approached it was more of a direct impact when she invited the elect officials in, but she also took a, um, an indirect impact, which was inviting voters who impact the elected officials by getting them, giving them a voice too, to see really what's happening in her building. And I really applaud it. And, uh, I see some uh, new uh, changes that I'll be bringing uh, um, here at Prairie Ridge Middle School next year, or hopefully this year. So as Greg said, I'm Jim Wichman from uh, Ankeny, Iowa, um, middle school principal here at Prairie Ridge. We have about a thousand students, a little over a thousand. And uh, one of the things that we, uh, it's my first year as a state coordinator, so I have to give um, uh, props to our school, our state agency, the School Administrators of Iowa, and Rora Horn for giving me a chance to, to um, but really my, my job is to serve the profession. And I look at how else am I supposed to be, how am I supposed to serve the profession and, and not just a, as an administrator role, but how else can I do so? So um, Rourke um, got me um, involved a little bit more with the state level and then in, invited me to be a, um, a state coordinator for NASSP. So I really appreciate the opportunity and, and uh, Greg and Zach have been wonderful in, in giving me opportunities such as this right here. When I look at um, what our role is here is it really is is to connect and and, and my first NPC um, was was last um, actually last the nineteenth whenever it was the, you know in uh, in Boston and and when I was out there I was able to meet with a couple of people um, Steve Baker and uh, Dan Richards and they kind of um, I don't know if they meant to do this or not, but they, they certainly became my mentors in a lot of this. And so like Tracy mentioned, this is a little overwhelming. And, uh, but when you have great people on the NASA, NASSP um, coordinator group, it really does help out a lot and you're never alone. And that's a message I really want you to walk away with. This is never alone and this is vital. This is very important that we're doing this. And I think Tracy articulated a lot, we got to put faces in front of the, the elected officials so they know how, who, not how, but who their votes are impacting. And, and you can't do that through any other ways than, than get them on site. 
So my nerves about inviting elected officials kind of got a nice little shove when I was invited to an um, October advocacy um, option or opportunity. And so I jumped right in and, and contacted some of the officials. And I remember some of the things that Dan and Steve, tips that Dan and Steve gave me, and, and that's, uh, let's make it a principle of the day. And while I was able to invite um, um, three of our elected officials, only um, one of them took advantage of this opportunity. And they really were intrigued with principle of the day. So then I got a little hooked there. What I also wanted to stress with them when I was talking out with them in October was the concern we have with mental health and the Title II funding and the Title IV funding that we have here and how that impacts a lot of the people um, that we have in the building, not just our, our students, but our teachers who are trying to navigate this as well. And they have their own burdens. And, and those burdens are going to be weighing on us even more as we enter in August of trying to figure this out. You know, you know we're, we're now forced to have what a 21st century education and we've been working on it since what, the last 20, 21 years. And I say that kind of facetiously, but it is true. And so the personal connections are important. And, and so when we, whenever you get an opportunity, like Tracy said, when you're connecting with the staffers, look for that connection. For Representative Axney, the, the principal of the day was really intriguing. More about that later. For Senator Grassley, it was, um, uh, his, his daughter-in-law is a, um, a paraprofessional for a, a school district in Iowa. And I started talking about her and um, kind of a funny story. He goes, oh, you know my daughter-in-law? And I said, Senator, I did my homework. So basically, Wikipedia shared that information with me. So if you just do a little bit of homework, you have that connection. But I, I guarantee the Senator is going to remember that we talked about um, his daughter-in-law and, and how these funds actually impact the, the paraprofessionals as well. So what, I, what we did was we, we set up a time for um, Senator or Representative Axney to come and visit. And we communicating with the, um, the staffers, which is kind of great when you're in um, on Washington, D.C. or when they're coming here, you learn what they need out of this visit as well. So we know what we want. We want them to connect with the people. We want them to see the students. We want them to see and hear from our teachers. And, um, and so what we did was we find out what they are. The staffers are going to um, share that with you and, and you're going to make sure that we, we hold true to that because we want them to come back. This is about relationship building more than just a one time, uh, one hit wonder, I guess you could say. We really want our, the people, the staffers or the representatives of the elected officials to come back and not just at the federal level, but at the local level. And again, Tracy's done a great job with that. So we brought the senator in, we, or excuse me, the representative in, Representative Axney, and we, we um, great, greeted her at the door when we gave her Principal of the Day badge. And of course, we gave her the walkie talkies, the radios. I even came with props today. So we gave the radios. Now, for the, the administrators that are worried about you actually gave her a radio because you're not sure what's going to happen, the radio was um, controlled frequency on this one. We controlled a lot of things on this just to make sure everything was on the up and up and, and, and so forth. So we gave her that. And then that's actually what we used um, to go from meeting to meeting. And uh, our secretary would call out for Principal Axney and she would have to respond and just kind of made it a kind of a fun interactive game and it was really low key. So the first group we had was teachers and you can see on the picture right here, um, you can see uh, Representative Axney talking with our teachers and our teachers are sitting there and it was quiet at first and then it became passionate and it wasn't about Democrat, it wasn't about Republican, it wasn't about independent, it wasn't about conservative or liberal. It was about our students, our mental health, our staff, and the mental health. And what we were saying there is the importance of that Title II funding and the Title IV funding for more than just um, our students, but our staff members. And she didn't hear it from me. She didn't hear it from the other um, elected officials. She heard it right from our teachers. And we gave them the opportunity to sit and listen. And anybody that wanted to be there could be there. This was probably one of our most powerful one because tears were there. There was laughter was there. And you could tell there was personal connections there. And of course, very, we had a lot of um, pictures along this. And the reason for that is because we wanted to control, we wanted to tell our story what's happening and control the message about why we're having elected officials come into Prairie Ridge Middle School. You will also note that I had, um, um, a school board president was invited and she attended as well. And so kind of, uh, you know, back to what Tracy had shared, when you get the local people involved too, that tells a lot of story. Our school board members don't know what's happening in our buildings. 
as much as they probably should. And so we have um, a lot of those opportunities to, to bring them in as well. Very similar opportunity, I mean, similar situation. So the school board president kind of followed us along. Then we um, got the opportunity to meet some students and, and um, Representative Axony is also working with um, um, an autism organization in the area and uh, was able to get a, I was able to get a picture taken with one of those, um, the child of one of the main advocates in that group. And that, that went a long way, not just with the representative, but also with that child's parents. So there's a lot of positive um, memories we make with this. So it's not just photo ops, it's more than that. It's really getting to the, the core of why we're doing what we're doing. And, and now while the public um, relations is important, it isn't the main reason why we're doing this. The other thing which I thought was kind of cute, funny, whatever you might say is the, the representative, um, she wanted to speak over the intercom. She wanted an opportunity to just hold the mic up, talk on the intercom to the whole school. Timing wise was wonderful. So we, we, um, we had her announce the winners of a contest we happened to be doing then. And I, I've heard Dan and Steve, they, they brought in their elected officials and do some big, you know, winner announcements. Oh my gosh, we totally made her day. And you'll see a couple pictures of this in here. So um, Congresswoman uh, Axney was able to talk on the intercom, just like she, she made it sound like this is like a lifelong bucket list dream. And by gosh, we were gonna make it happen and we did. So it was wonderful. And then of course, Twitter was a, was a great way that we were able to connect with um, some publicity, not just for um, Representative Axney, but also we wanna tell the um, elected officials that here at Ankeny or here in Iowa, this is a place we want you to come and visit so you can see again, see how your votes impact our students and our staff. Okay. Very, can you go on to the next slide, please? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So prior to a visit, it's really kind of a, a tricky, so how do you get this started? NASSP does a great job of just giving you the people you need to know. And we're gonna go through, There's a, you can get on the internet, you can do a lot of the things, but I like the information that I was able to access from NASSP, which told me the, not only the, the elected official, but also told me um, the, the contacts, and the contacts are the main people. So as soon as you can get your name into their contacts, that's the best. I was able to, to accomplish that with, with uh, two of the four senator or two of the four elected officials that we have so far. I'm, I'm, I'm going to win all of them. I've got that feeling before it's all said and done. We also want to talk about um, the, to the staff, the, the staff of the, the elected officials and then to our own staff about what's the purpose of this. And of course, bringing along the, um, the superintendent and let them know what's happening again. And this has been made very clear. This is not a political right, left um, Republican Democrat. This is about, these are our voters. These are our, our um, decision makers, and we need them as informed as possible when we are um, when they're sitting um, in Washington D.C. That's the most. That's the critical part within this. And then, of course, you can you know you kind of send teasers out to. I like to send teasers out to um, of other people that in the area kind of build up the um, excitement about. We got surprise guests coming. This one happened to be um, right before Thanksgiving. And so we were able to um, just kind of um, kick us off into break by having Thanksgiving, which also helped out that um, the, uh, Representative Axney was in the area. So again, get the information from um, an ASSP, or you can reach out to Tracy and I, we can help you out with that as well. And then you just kind of like walking it through what's the first step, second step. It really is an easy task. It really is. It's just getting the first one done is what really needs to happen. All right, great. Okay, during the visit, um, the first thing you do is greet. Make this the wonderful um, experience from the get-go. So we had um, Representative Axney come in. We have a big uh, Prairie Ridge uh, sign. We had a, a, my pictures taken with her. We had everybody in the office had their opportunity to get a picture taken. So it was kind of like a rock star feel. We wanted the, the representative to feel as welcome and in kind of like a celebrity status, if you will. We want to give that feel good um, as soon as they walk in the building. Then we handed over, we ha I had the secretary hand over the ID badge for principal today, uh, handed over the walkie talkie and showed how to use that. And then we um, kind of got, got on with our day. 
as you can see, um, this is a picture of her, uh, the representative uh, sitting in our desk, my desk, as the principal, taking her first, uh, uh, her first radio call. And then you can see um, in Michigan, you know, the students getting involved. Um, you can see the uh, ornery kid in the top right. Of course, the, you know, the representative gets to, meet the, gets to meet the principal's kid too. So that's just a little benefit there. And then I was a little worried about that of all the students, but uh, he did okay. And then, um, and then again, making the intercom. And what you, you can see is her smile was ear to ear on that one. And while we think it's just what we do on a daily basis, they don't get that sense of, of whatever it is when, when you're in a school and, and just as great. And there's also probably eight cameras going off when she's taking that picture too. So we also had our district um, public relations person here as well. Capture, the, capture with pictures because it, it tells a great story to all of our students and our staff. And it's one that we'll remember and one that we're gonna use as we connect in the future. Okay, Greg. So after the visit, so we're not done when they walk out the door, we, we wanna promote. So one of the things that we also had um, Representative Axine do, we just took a short little jaunt over to a, a private small business startup where um, one of our high school groups, it was Orbis is what they're, they're called. And it's the Orbis group is, is kind of like a, it's a way of looking at things just a little differently in an education. So it's um, this group partnered up with um, a local business. And so when you have your high school students now, sitting at um, a table with the representative and the small business owner sitting there talking about how wonderful this connection is. So our Title IV funds, part of our Title IV funding will goes into supporting that. And so we can say how, again, putting that, how your vote impacts all these kids. And then what happened was probably the most magical thing in the world. The adults shut up and the kids spoke. They spoke about the talents they learned. They spoke about how that was different. And, and they challenged, I mean, she challenged them about how is this, you know, what can you gain from this? There's no, it just was different. Now, the, the, the aspect of that one is the business owner got to sit there and, and speak to the representative as well. We just gave her another person to connect with in the community and in the state. And again, it's the faces, it's the relationships, it's the formerly known as handshakes. I say that facetiously. Um, but it really was those stories. And again, tears, tears from the adults listening to the kids tell their story and their pride and their experiences. And these are students of all likes. They are just, it was an amazing opportunity for the, set, the representative to see that. And then also the students to experience this. And then we just validated every one of those students by making it a point to have an elected official at the federal level be there to speak with them in a small group setting. And I can assure you the small business owner um, really appreciated that as well. And I, yeah, I'm sure it probably did impact a vote or two. We did talk about a press release. We, our school district took a, um, um, that them upon themselves about sharing that information. Definitely a lot of pictures were sent out. It's on our website. It was, um, you can see a couple of the tweets there, not all from me. Not all from Prairie Ridge, some from the district were sent out. And then also you saw Orbis down there. They were, they were really excited about that opportunity as well. And then you can see them there. You can see a, a little picture there with the um, representative talking to a government class here at, at Prairie Ridge. Um, one tip might be to maybe screen the questions beforehand, although they were pretty harmless, but I was really worried about uh, some of the things that were gonna pop up that were on the national stage that involved um, the president, but we were good. We got, she did a wonderful job with that. Uh, and then I also made sure that every time that we um, tweeted out or we sent um, Instagram or anything out, we made sure we contacted the, the representatives, uh, um, people, their staff members to make sure that they got the information and they would push it out again as well. So it's connect, relationships, puts people in front of them, relationships, post um, after visit relationships. And still I'm using these information, this information now to, um, I'm trying to get our, our elected officials into Zoom meetings with our teacher just to talk about what their worries are, what their excitement is about going into August. The excitement, I'm not really sure what that is at this time, but we're gonna figure that out as well. It'll be, it'll be great for everybody in some fashion, I think. Okay, Greg. So 
you're sitting there, I saw a couple of chats that were saying, you know, can we, is there a way that we can um, get access to this information? I, I just know that there's a lot of people out there to help out. NASSP is wonderful. Greg, Zach, uh, or I would say definitely reach out to them. Tracy's been through this at different levels. My, you can reach out to me both. You can see um, our Twitter um, handles are on there. And then also email, um, great opportunities. The um, shadowing visits, we also like to tag it with um, a lot of different things. So I know that um, you'll see information about Principles Month will be on there a lot of like a strong encouragement to have people come in during that time. That didn't work out for us. October worked because the um, representative was in the area. We also have um, um, various times throughout the year, uh, such as I know, like, I think it's Steve or Dan, um, I think Steve Baker, he, he has people come in on Veterans Day. Um, he's connected with them, so it's a little patriotic feel. Flag Day, I mean, so Memorial Weekend, not the weekend, but you know, the week. So there's just a lot of great opportunities to come out there um, and invite them and, and make it a celebrity, a celebrity type of feel, but also a celebration to help out. Um, again, National Principals Month in October is just a, sometime in October is just a great, just a great opportunity, I guess, to say it, um, and depending on um, the availability of the um, elected officials. And Jim, if, if I may add to, um, you know, October is getting back to school time, and, and we talked a little bit about COVID-19 and the importance of lawmakers seeing what schools are dealing with as, as students start to get back in the building and, you know, whether you're on, on an A-B schedule or only half of the students are there at one time or, you know, you have a week on and a week off for remote learning, whatever the situation is, they really need to know what the implications of the decisions that they're making are. So whether that's federal elected officials or state elected officials or the state board of education. So that time in general, that September, October back to school time it is just generally a really good opportunity to kind of show them the implications of what back to school looks like during COVID-19. So in addition to NPM, um, which we were always um, emphasizing doing shadowing visits during that month every year, I think that's another good um, hook there and a reason why it's important to invite elected officials to the school this fall. Yeah, again, just seeing what's real versus what the medium might pick up or, or like Tracy and I were just talking about, and that's make, control the message, control the message that is what's actually happening in getting them in. Um, and in, it may look a little tricky bringing them in in October, we're not sure. Um, but Zoom or some kind of virtual conference would be um, it's probably the second best way to do it. But this would be the way to start reaching out to the, to the people now. Again, it's really, I say it's really easy, but it was really hard for, I, and I think Tracy mentioned this too, it's really hard to take that first step. You just don't have to do any of this alone. And, and that's what I like about uh, NASSP. None of this you have to do alone. There's a lot of people that can help out along the way. The fellow administrators are very willing as well. So um, never, never worry about reaching out to any of us. That's what we're about. In fact, when we can have this common, vi this common vision throughout the nation, um, of talking to all the elected officials. I just think that's powerful. So I think it's important um, to know that, kind of to piggyback off what Jim said in regards to you know getting them in the building and reaching out now, um, it's hard to always make it happen when you think is the best time for it to happen because their schedules are also busy. So the sooner you reach out um, mm -hmm. and request an opportunity, you um, will have an opportunity for that staffer to maybe get on the calendar to find out when that's gonna work best. Um, my perspective is you can't reach out too much because the worst thing that happens is the answer is no or it doesn't fit in and you just keep going back to the table and coming back with when, when will it work. Um, for me also with locally, you know, it's, whether it's our school board members that come in or parents that come in, I have that opportunity offered on a monthly basis. So right on our website, it's part of my high school calendar where a parent can just click on that and sign up through a Google link. Um, NASSP has the ability for us to use a platform to reach out to schedule visits as well. And that's what you're seeing on the screen right now. I think um, the other thing that's really important for you to know is that NASSP and many of our state associations are using a platform like this 
in order to advocate whenever it's necessary. So whenever there is a new vote happening and we want to be sure that the lawmakers in our areas understand how important it is to vote positively for something, to support something for schools, use the tools that are available to you because it's very, very simple. You fill in your name, your email, your address, and it populates for you everyone who is local um, so that they're hearing the voice of a local building administrator. I just think it's important for you to know that that tool and that platform is available and it's very, very easy to use. And then um, after you do that, you then have the opportunity to post it on your own social media site. And so that's where you shout out that you are asking all of your followers to do the same thing. And then that's how the momentum gets started. Anytime there's something happening um, where we need a lot of people to jump on board. And Tracy, if I may just add one quick point about what's on screen here in terms of contacting me for um, congressional staffer contact information. Uh, we have access to a database of all congressional staff. So we know who the exact point person is in every congressional office who handles scheduling for the representatives and the senators. So, you know, if you go to their website and just look up the contact information, you know, you're trying to reach out and get in touch about inviting the lawmaker into the school, you're going to get that general contact form and they do check those, but sometimes it takes more time for them to sift through all the general responses they get through there. So just knowing exactly who the right person is and their email address and their phone number to reach out to about requesting a visit can help expedite the process and move things along a little bit. So um, when we put you know, my email address on screen here and encourage you to reach out, uh, I really do encourage you to do so just because we can look that up very quickly and, and find out who the right person is for you to contact if you want to set up a visit. So the other piece to that is um, I just wanted to say when you're doing it uh, the way that I said that I use a Google form, I have on my Google form the parent name, the parent email so that I have a way to, to do a, a confirmation email and a reminder the day before the visit. But I also have a spot on there for them to put the children that are in my building in what grade level. And I have found in the spring, I start to get eighth grade parents that want to come and do a learning walk prior to their students starting as a freshman in our building. So I will be doing probably a little bit of that through Zoom coming up in August since we didn't get to bring any of those parents in this spring. Um, but again, helping that transition from one building to another and helping people feel comfortable. Um, and that's just another great thing when I shared that with Rep Heisinga, and then also um, P Mr. Peters, um, his staffer that came in, he was kind of, they were just both really surprised that I was trying to do some of that transition piece by getting those parents in and comfortable prior to their students even starting. I think that's important um, so that everybody feels comfortable. So this is just another peek at what that platform looks like and then the ability that NASSP has, they help you generate um, what your communication is. So it, you don't even have to, I mean, it's, it really is slick and it's very quick. You don't have to sit and think, oh, what will I say? How will I ask them? You know, if you use, if you use the tools that are provided through NASSP, it's, it's really very, very nice to do and it gives you the, the language to use in your email. Great. Well, we've reached uh, the Q&A portion of the presentation here. So if anybody has a question they want to ask, um, please feel free to use the chat or Q&A features in Zoom. Um, I, I've got a couple of comments here, and I think we already touched on this a little bit. Um, but I have some folks asking about the, uh, the political aspect to inviting lawmakers into the building. Jim, I think you touched on this a little bit. There's always a risk that this could be perceived as you're giving an elected official a platform to speak about politics. So how do you recommend that principals who want to do a visit like this highlight the civic importance side of things of having an, a lawmaker in a school and stress that these visits are not about promoting any particular political ideology? So one of the things that I, I, I did was um, 
I moved away from a, a one area to another, one school district to another. I even invited the representative um, who, uh, she was a, she's a Republican, but she's from a different part of the state. And I knew that when she's in the Des Moines area, I said, come on in and see the school. So I, not only did I, as a state coordinator, not only did I um, invite multiple people into the uh, multiple parties into the building, I did it not from the lens of they were out of district. So this person came to visit um, um, out of district. Chris Canoria came to, and visited um, our school and wasn't even in our district. So it really is how much you want to control this. We stayed out of the politics. We didn't stay. I mean, that's why I said maybe the kids, if you have kids ask questions, you might want to. Um, that's probably where I would have seen it the most. But the but we invited um, all parties have been here. And uh, we don't really make it a party conversation in the building. There, there's. There was times I got to tell you I was a little worried about it when when in talking to people that didn't have the same views as I did when it comes to uh, politics. But you have to set that aside and think about it's not about that. It's about building relationships and again putting the faces in front of the voters so that they vote for kids' faces or people's faces versus numbers or party. And I think that this is a great place to to break down those barriers if nothing else because I mean. There's no signs around this area that says blue, green, red, whatever it is. It's just kids and people and relationships. And please remember this when you vote. Yeah, and I'll, and I'll piggyback on that. Um, I have had, um, you know, I, I bring the League of Women Voters into my building twice a year to make sure that all of my 18 year olds get registered to vote. And I've had some parents question what, what they're coming in to push. Um, and I just think that we have a civic responsibility to educate our students and to make sure that our students understand how their voice can be heard. And so some of the things that we're trying to help educate our students on are where and when is it appropriate to do things, you know, like protesting or going to here in, Grant, in Michigan, going to Lansing where the capital is and trying to talk to lawmakers or when you're 18 vote so that you have the opportunity to have your voice be heard. Um, and so I've allowed parents to come in and watch some of those things happen. And when I get questioned on what lawmakers are coming in, you know, I make sure everybody understands that whoever is a voted official in my area is invited to come into our building. So we don't try to pick one color over the other. Um, somebody who has a stance that's more this or that we want everybody to see what's happening in our school every single day. So I think it's just really, really important that we have to be the voice of what's happening. Our lawmakers and elected officials don't understand what happens in a building of nearly 2,000 every day if, if I'm not the voice and sharing that information. So I'm excited to tell you that one of my seniors, um, based on some opportunities that we've provided for him and encouraged him, He's, he's going to be moving forward into that platform after he finishes commencement. That's just burned a passion in his belly and he's gonna move into legislative action in some way, shape or form. And so we're kind of excited that he got that start right in Grand Haven. That's great, great advice and great stories. Um, one comment here from the chat that I, I wanna point out is from uh, Allison Maley, who is the Director of Government Relations for uh, the Illinois Principals Association. And she says, uh, and by the way, Illinois does a, um, a massive principal for a day shadowing visit um, annual event every year. So Allison is scheduling dozens of these shadowing visits. And she says that when she sends the confirmation to state legislators, she started to include this specific language. As a reminder, this is an opportunity intended to promote continued collaboration among, leg, among leg legislators and educators. Discussions with students and staff about politics should be limited to general civic engagement. Participants should not engage in electioneering for any individual candidates. So she started to include that directly in the communication with lawmakers, just to further emphasize that point. Um, and then uh, another question we have here from Clifton in Delaware is um, regarding the election year coming up. And um, he says that I know we are starting, we start getting calls during this time of year. Should I make additional efforts to get the other parties in if someone comes from one party? Jim and Tracy, what do you think about that? 
I got sorry, I got distracted from um, um, I think it's Allison's comments. So I was laughing a little bit about the uh, the politician who is campaigning at third grade. So I'm so sorry I kind of missed part of that question there because I think that's funny. Yeah, Clifton said um, if you if you're having a shadowing visit with um, you know say the representative is a Democrat, should you make an extra effort to find a Republican to come in as well? I I, I actually make the same um, effort to all of them. In fact, um, yeah, I would, I would, I just make the same effort. I worked really hard to get both in, um, both parties in, and um, I may, may or may not say, hey, well, we're going to have um, one represent a Democrat representative in here. Would you like to come in as well? I might, may do something like that, but really, I think it's just everybody do the same for everybody, so then it keeps it all clean. And again, we want them in. Elected, it is a. Um, it is an election year, but to, for us, we have, I mean, every year is important. I know that people will be trying to kind of do the, you know, push their their platform one way or the other, or be able to say that they're into the schools. Regardless of how we get them into the school, as long as we um, kind of like follow what Allison was saying and, and keep it as relationships, see what's happening, know what's happening, and this is what we want you to, to know when you move on, wherever it is, because um, well, we've already kind of beat the dead horse on that one. It's really is that those relationships and seeing what's actually happening in the school versus what the newspapers might share or, um, or what rumor mill Facebook might share with us. So I don't, yeah. I don't think I would make an extra effort, but maybe Tracy would. Yeah, I, I'll just piggyback on that and say um, I don't make an extra effort. I invite every person who is making decisions um, in. Yeah. I typically, when I'm having a lawmaker come in, I typically only have one at a time. Um, when I do my parent walks, I try to limit it to 12 to 15. If I get more parents that sign up at one time than that, I, I, will, I won't turn anybody away because that might be the only time that fits into their schedule. Um, and so I might ask one of my assistant principals to do the actual learning walk in the building so that we're not walking into a classroom with 15 people. I separate it um, when we go on the walk, but we do our conversation all together with whoever's there. Um, I've never had a situation where more than one lawmaker has wanted to come in a, on the exact same day. So um, I have had a situation where a previous elected official would every reach out back, always want to schedule a time when it was our scheduled spring break. Um, so I think there was a little intimidation on his part to be in a building with 2000 high schoolers, because I would have to respond with, I appreciate that week opportunity, but the building's gonna be empty. And part of the whole experience is being in the building when it's full. They need to see in action what happens in your building. So I do, I do think that's important. Um, when we can be face to face, I think it's really critical. You know, I, I schedule the times if I can intentionally over a lunch period. Intentionally, I'm in the hallway during passing time. You know, I want them to see what it looks like. I don't put on a show and make sure everybody's sitting in nice rows and not, I mean, I want them to see what it looks like. It's really important to have that authentic experience. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, we're getting close to time, so I think we'll have to leave the Q&A there. Um, before we end our webinar this afternoon, we, we couldn't end uh, a webinar with the advocacy conference without making a call to all of you watching to actually take action and help make a difference. So uh, I'd like to ask everybody watching to text the phrase E-rate to the phone number 52886. Again, that's E-rate to 52886 to help us advocate on one of the campaigns we're working on at NASSP. Um, once you receive the text, you'll get a link. And um, when you click on the link, you'll see a form pop up that you like you can see on screen here to the right. Like Tracy talked about, it's very simple. Just enter your information. And when you click preview email, you'll see a pre-written message that we are sending up to Congress right now about an issue that is um, really affecting students everywhere, and, and that's the homework gap. Um, so many students we know do not have access to reliable home internet access right now, and that is preventing them from um, having all of the, uh, the 
access and opportunity that they need to learn while all of this remote and digital learning is taking place during COVID-19. And that's something that's going to continue into the fall. Even when students come back in person, there are still going to be some elements of remote learning in place. Um, and, you know, this is an issue that has existed for a long time and is not going away. So we need to do more to ensure that we are providing hotspots and other devices to families and students that do not have internet access so that they can learn during this time. So that's the message we're sending up to the Hill. So again, if you text E-Rate to 52886, fill in your information, um, send a message up there and help us make a difference. Hey, Greg, can I make one more little statement? Yes. Before you um, I know you have some information here. I just it would be remiss if I, first of all, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Happy belated Mother's Day out there. Um, and then I also ask, um, I hope it, this Friday is June 19th. And June 19th is a significant date in our country that a lot of us haven't um, learned a lot about over our years. Um, as, a, as a father of someone who is um, a biracial, it, it is a special day because it's June 19th or Juneteenth. It's a, it's, a celebrate, it's a celebration for our country that we should be honoring a, a more so. I guess that's a personal opinion, so I apologize there. But um, what I'm asking is if everybody could just take the time to learn a little bit more about the significance of this of June 19th and Juneteenth celebration and, and then make it a point to speak out to our, our, our um, brothers and sisters of, of, of color and, and just just let them know that you, you understand and recognize that. So I'm sorry, Greg, that was a little personal little plug there, but it's something I believe that we need to be more aware of, I guess, is, is learning. So thank you for that moment there. Of course, thanks, Jim. And, and yeah, I, I really appreciate you calling out Juneteenth and um, something we should all be celebrating and paying attention to and teaching in schools as well. So um, I appreciate you uh, making that point. Um, so this concludes part two of our 2020 virtual advocacy conference. As a reminder, part three of the series will take place in two weeks on July 1st. In the final webinar, our presenters will discuss specific strategies for advocating with state lawmakers and how principals should consider approaching those often more immediately accessible officials. Um, sometimes members of Congress can be harder to pin down, but usually state reps and senators are a little bit more accessible. So the two principals that will be presenting on that webinar have lots of experience uh, making the voice of school leaders, leaders heard in their state capitol buildings. And you also, you'll also hear from a prominent advocacy staffer with the Human Rights Campaign, who's led successful state legislative campaigns in several states across the country on behalf of LGBT, LGBT rights for students and educators. So um, some great presenters we have lined up for that webinar coming up on July 1st. You can RSVP for part three now and access recordings to parts one and two on our website. Again, the address is nassp.org slash 2020 virtual advocacy. I'd like to thank Jim and Tracy once again for their excellent presentation today. And thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, stay safe and be well, and hopefully we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks folks.